Hello my friends, today we're going to be doing a quote from Dr. Cornell West. He is a famous philosopher, political activist, public intellectual, and more. Now here at the Red Spirit Mask YouTube channel, one of our main goals is to try to get general audiences interested in the subject matter of African art and culture. And recently, I happened to notice that a book titled Africa, the Art of a Continent has a preface that was written by none other than Dr. Cornell West. So for today's video, I thought I'd share with you all what Dr. West has to say about the importance of African art. But before we begin, I want you all to know that this book was written back in the 1990s, so that's an important detail to keep in mind while we read. Now without further ado, let's read what Dr. Cornell West had to say about this art book and about African art in general. This monumental exhibition is unprecedented in the history of the art world. Never before has there been gathered such a rich and vast array of African art objects and artifacts from such a broad time span, and rarely has any exhibition embraced the artistic treasures of the whole of Africa, from Egypt to Ife to Great Zimbabwe. This historic public showing of beautiful and complex African gems takes place at an upbeat moment in African art criticism and a downbeat time in African political life, with fascinating new breakthroughs in archaeological and anthropological investigations into African empires and societies, we are able to appreciate better the complex diversity and incredible creativity of past and present African artists. Yet the pernicious legacy of European imperialism coupled with the myopic and corrupt leadership of many African elites has left much of the continent politically devastated and economically impoverished. Gone are the old intellectual frameworks predicated on crude white supremacy and subtle Eurocentrism, the once popular categories of barbarism, primitivism, and exoticism have been cast by the academic wayside. The homogenous definitions and monolithic formulations of African art have been shattered. The Whiggish historiographical paradigms of cultural evolution and political modernizations have been discredited. Instead, we are in search of new ways of keeping track of the fully-fledged humanity of Africans by seriously examining their doings, makings, and sufferings under circumstances not of their own choosing. By taking their humanity for granted, we are in danger of being neither apologists for European colonialism nor romantic celebrants of African achievements. Rather, we take Africans seriously by taking African history seriously, an ambitious endeavor still in its embryonic stage in the West. This important exhibition is a crucial step in such a world historical endeavor. To take African history seriously requires a careful and cautious scrutiny of the distinct and sometimes disparate contexts of particular African traditions, rituals, kinship networks, patronage relationships, and disciplines of craftsmanship. This kind of historic inquiry with its stress on the complex interplay of the local with the regional, continental, and global forces at work, enable us to highlight the specific ways in which African artists, critics, patrons, and communities create, sustain, and deploy art objects. An intellectually challenging and morally humane approach of this order, be it to metalwork, rock art, male masked performance, female pottery sculpture, body decoration, or architecture rests on a deep knowledge and sophisticated analysis of particular histories of specific African peoples. Intellectual ferment in the art world in regard to African artworks may contribute to overcoming the invisible status of African life in late 20th century international relations. The tragic plight and predicament of most present-day Africans remains forgotten on the world scene, and the old, ugly stereotypes of African persons as exotic and transgressive objects, as hypersexual and criminal abstractions in the white imagination, are still pervasive in much of the postmodern West. Art never simply reflects reality, rather it forces us to engage our past and present so that we see the fragility and contingency of our prevailing views of reality. In this way, art can and does change the world. This unparalleled exhibition at the end of a barbaric century 
confirms the tenacious human will to survive and thrive with artistic beauty and worldly engagement in history then and now. Alrighty, so that was a quote from Dr. Cornell West, and that came from this book right here, that one, the one that says Africa in red. Anyway, uh, and yeah, I finally have a proper bookshelf, holy shit. But anyway, uh, the reason why I want to share this quote with you all today is that I think the, the whole line where he's talking about art can change the world, that's really important to me, because I agree with that very much um, and more specifically he talks about how if people were to learn about African art it could help change our society for the better because unfortunately we live in a racist world and right now as you may know from paying attention to the news there are a number of racists out there that are attacking our education system trying to make it harder for people to learn about black people's history we need to push back against those people and we need to stress the importance of educating our society about the accomplishments of Africans. We're talking about African art, African culture, African history. Those are all interrelated concepts that need to be taught together. Why is it that students in our society learn about the art from Greece and Italy but they never learn about art from the Congo and Nigeria? We need to change some things. If you're new to the channel, be sure to stick around and check out one of our many educational African art videos. Not only do we have things that you might expect like museum type videos and other academic type videos, but we also integrate our African lessons with the sorts of popular media that people already enjoy, like video games and movies and more. And of course the point of that is to reach out to folks who've never been exposed to African culture and hope that I've piqued their interest and curiosity to learn more. And I hope you want to learn more too. Thank you for watching and please click that subscribe button.